Grace and mercy and peace are yours in abundance from God our Father, through our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A portion of God's Word I want to consider with you this morning is the first lesson from God's Word. We heard Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. In Christ Jesus, dearly beloved, what if I were to stand here today and tell you that the year 2021 will be so much better than the year 2020? And, you know, granted, we still have like three and a half weeks of 2020 to go. But throughout the course of this past calendar year, there has been political upheaval, a global pandemic, racial tensions and concerns about societal injustice reaching a boiling point, an economic roller coaster, a hotly contested election, not collection, election. There's division, there's conflict. And that's just covering the, the broad themes in society as a whole. What happens when you narrow the scope and start focusing in on your own life and the lives of your dear ones? Well, then it just seems that the trials and the challenges multiply. A lost job, a lost income, lost stability, lost security. Lost relationships. Lost loved ones. But what if I were to tell you here today that yes, the year 2021 is going to be one in which God brings restoration and abundant blessing. Would you be able to put into words just how comforting that would be? And yes, come a few weeks from now, we can all come up for air. Now imagine that it wasn't just one bad year, but 70. And imagine you weren't shut up in your home for a couple weeks or several months or whatever it has been. But your home was destroyed and you were driven from it into exile, not for some weeks or months, but for decades. Thus was the situation. I should say thus would be the situation with the Israelites. And so to say that the words that God speaks through the prophet Isaiah in chapter 40 would be comforting to them would be a tremendous understatement. Now the awesome yet kind of tricky thing about much of Isaiah and, and what is written there is that God communicated His words through the prophet, yes, not just to speak of events and realities at Isaiah's time and, and the times shortly there following, but also to speak of New Testament events and New Testament realities. And so you don't have to be an Old Testament Israelite looking at exile or return from exile for these words to apply to you. After all, maybe you caught it in our Gospel lesson from Mark 1 this morning. Our Old Testament lesson was quoted in reference to what? To John the Baptist's work of preparing the people for Jesus. Yes, we God's people of the New Testament era find joy in these words as well. And so with that understanding, we turn our attention to these words and what they contain. God's Advent comforts for you. Comfort number one. Listen again to verse two. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem, or more literally, speak to the heart of Jerusalem, and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, or another way of translating that is that her punishment has been accepted, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. 
If you were to read the first 39 chapters of Isaiah, you would find that it is no secret that by and large the Israelites had fallen away from God, and that is why they were facing destruction and or exile. But now, God was promising what? That exile would come to an end. Why? Because in exile, the people had been duly punished for all their faithlessness. Because they had suffered enough, not just once, but, but twice over to make up for all their faithlessness of the past. Or maybe, just maybe, God is saying that despite their sin, it has all been paid for in double measure from the Lord's hand. Because ultimately, how sin gets paid for for Old Testament believers is no different than how sin gets paid for for New Testament believers. Blood and death. Not our blood. Not our death. The blood and the death of the Son of God. His suffering, His death, in our place. God did not bring the exiles back from Babylon because they had suffered sufficiently or even double what they were supposed to for all of their sins. No, He brought the exiles, he brought the exiles back from Babylon because that was part of an important part of his grand plan of salvation that said that the Savior was not supposed to be born in Babylon, but in Bethlehem. We have received double from the Lord's hand for all of our sins because Jesus, the Son of God, has paid for them all. What would you say is the worst thing you've ever done? What are you most ashamed of? That sin too has been paid for by the blood of Jesus. We, by God's grace, have received double for all of our sins because Jesus shed His blood for us where sin abounded, grace abounded all the more. So that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So yes, brothers and sisters, bring all your sin, the big ones and the small ones. Bring all your shame, bring all your guilt to the cross of Christ. And leave them there. Because at the cross of Christ, your guilt is gone. That is God's advent comfort for you. Your guilt is gone. That's number one. On to number two. How comforting does this sound? All people are like grass, and all their best appearance is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, and the flowers fall. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, and the flowers fall. You're grass, I'm grass. All people are grass. We wither and we fall. How much comfort, comfort is there there? To look at this from an Old Testament Israelite perspective, God had had some pretty dire warnings communicated through the prophet Isaiah, right? Warnings about Israelites' unfaithfulness. Warnings about the coming destruction, first at the hands of the Assyrians and then at the hands of the Babylonians. Warnings about the coming exile. And then finally, as we have in these verses, promise of restoration. 
Yes, human beings, the Israelites and their faithlessness, yeah, they were like grass. They would wither and fall. But you know who else would? The Assyrians and the Babylonians. And after all of the rising and falling and growing and withering, one thing would remain. The Word of our God endures forever. What God declares happens. What He says goes. He makes good on His promises. And so yes, the Israelites would be carried off into exile, but you know what else would happen? They would be restored. Why? Because God said so. That is our comfort, brothers and sisters. Perhaps the events of the past year have had a vivid way of showing you just how temporary and transitory and fleeting everything in this world is. People are here today and gone tomorrow. Things are here today and gone tomorrow. But you know what isn't here today and gone tomorrow? The Word of the Lord, because that endures forever. So when He says that your guilt is gone in Jesus. That was true yesterday, it's true today, and it always will be true. When He says that He hears your prayers and will answer in accordance with His good and gracious will for you in your life, that was true yesterday, it is true today, it will be true always in the future. When He tells you not to worry about anything, but instead to seek first His kingdom and His righteousness because all these things are going to be given to you as well. That was true yesterday. It's true today. And it always will be. Because the Word of the Lord endures forever. That one thing the Word and promises of God that is the immovable anchor of your life. And that is God's Advent comfort for you here in Isaiah 40, number 2. And it serves as a great segue to Advent comfort number 3. The Lord is coming. He's coming. It's going to happen. Why? Because He said so. And His Word endures forever. And what a picture we have painted for us. Kind of contrasting pictures in verses 10 and 11 of Isaiah chapter 40. In verse 10 we have this, this, this unstoppable powerhouse of an almighty God coming to bring divine retribution, coming to put a permanent end to His enemies and to bring eternal reward and blessing to His people. And then in verse 11, we have just about the opposite picture. We have the picture of a tender shepherd who cares for his little sheep and picks them up in his arms and holds them close to his heart. Our God is both of those things. And when the Lord Jesus returns to this world, and He will, He will return as both of those things. That powerhouse to bring permanent destruction on all who would stand opposed to Him and His people. And that tender shepherd who would come to pick up every one of His sheep, you and me, up in His arms and hold us close to His heart forever. And so, brothers and sisters, we prepare for the second coming of Jesus with these Advent comforts that God promises here in Isaiah 40. 
in Jesus, your guilt is gone. And so you can face His second coming with total confidence, with total stability, with total security. All those things that maybe the year 2020 has, has felt like have gone out the window. No, they are still yours in Christ Jesus, your Savior. And they always will be because the Word of God endures forever. He is coming to gather you, His people, to Himself and hold you close to His heart forever. And so come quickly. Come quickly, Lord Jesus, and until you do, comfort, comfort your people with these, your Advent comforts. Amen. Please stand.